Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we're here for another poetry discussion. Another poetry discussion because this is National Poetry Month. We have 30 poetry discussions in 30 days. Hey, real quick before we get into that spiel, there is a link to my personal channel in the description below. I'm 56 subscribers away from 1,000. It would mean the world to me if you would help me get there. Uh, over there, I talk about philosophy. I talk about movies. I talk about just random things that come up. I talk about, um, I do video essays, things like that. Goal setting. If you want to become better at being a terrible human, created in a divine image. Anyway, this is National Poetry Month. On Sunday, there are Sylvia Plath poems. Monday, William Blake. Tuesday, Edgar Allan Poe. Wednesdays with Willie. Uh, William Shakespeare. Wednesdays, we're going through the sonnets right now. Thursday with Emily Dickinson. Friday with Robert Frost and... Slumming Saturdays with Charles Bukowski. Now, this is a poetry discussion with William Blake, the second Billy that we're doing. William Shakespeare and William Blake, a poem called A Divine Image. Look, literature is the only thing I talk about on this channel. Poetry, short stories, novels. So if you find yourself here by chance but not design, consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stay around for more of that. There was honking outside my apartment. I don't know if you can hear that. Terrible storm right now, right in the middle of a terrible storm. Very, by the way, fitting for William Blake, The Wrath of God. Now, the poem we are looking at today is called A Divine Image, and it reads as such. Cruelty has a human heart, and jealousy a human face, terror the human form divine, and secrecy, the human dress. The human dress is forged iron, the human form, a fiery forge. The human face, a furnace sealed. The human heart is hungry, its hungry gorge. Just one more time, because it's so brief. Cruelty has a human heart, and jealousy a human face. Terror, the human form design, divine, and secrecy, the human dress. The human dress is forged iron. The human form, a fiery forge. The human face, a furnace sealed. The human heart, its hungry gorge. Makes you feel good, doesn't it? William Blake, not exactly Les Brown, but maybe he was on his way. Now, I want to start this discussion with what is probably a more modern or contemporary talking point. The talking point of irony, something that we have become in the last 100 years, it's 2023, yeah, about 100 years, very, very um, preoccupied with in the place of literature. And I, you know, I'm a fan of irony. And I am a fan of employing irony whenever it might benefit an optional read of something. Does irony, the optionality of irony, add any dimension to a piece? Now, here's the thing. Was this written by William Blake employing irony, saying a divine image, an image of God, and giving such terrible talking points. No, that was not employed with irony. This was absolutely meant, as it is said, by William Blake. Why? Because man was created in the image of God. That is given to us in the holy texts. Because that is given to us in the holy texts, we have to interpret that as people. If we're following that text, if we're reading that text, and even if we're not, we have to we wouldn't you want to understand why someone would employ something like that in their religious text why someone would mention something like man being created in the image of god because what happens very quickly here we go from a divine image a divine image the image of divinity purity wholeness divinity perfection to eternity, divine, divinity, 
straight into cruelty. A divine image? Cruelty has a human heart. That's not by accident. That's not an oopsie. That was very much on purpose. A divine image makes you think, aww. Cruelty has a human heart. Ooh. Aww. Ooh. Right? That is a breakneck sort of transition. In my religious days, I spent a lot of time wondering what this phrase meant. Man is created in the image of God. What does that mean? It, it seemed to me that the obvious on-the-nose sort of interpretation that, you know, if you die and go to heaven, there's going to be a white guy with long white hair there reaching out to you with his little finger, right? Like in on the Sistine Chapel. It seemed to me that that was sort of hooey, that that was sort of a very um, mundane explanation. After all, that couldn't really be the case if looks were all that was concerned because all of us look very different. So it seemed to me that, quote, created in the image of God, end quote, if that phrase were a conundrum, if it were sort of uh, quizzical, it was a phrase that was a conundrum that was self-contained, self-contained with its answer. What do I mean? Well, if man is created in the image of God, God is the creator. No other species on the planet creates like us, baby. Ants build castles, sure. Some apes use rocks, fine. I don't know any bonobos putting on plays. Okay, not very many tigers producing movies. Nothing creates like we do. All we do is create. We have created so much. We have transformed the face of the planet. Um, I can't remember the name. Um, I don't think it's sociologists. Maybe it is sociologists. Say that, No, it's not sociologists. Whoever deals with the environment, environmentalist scientists, I, I can't think of the, the name of that form of science. They say that we have so transformed the face of the earth that we are actually, like, you know, uh, Ice Age, the mini Ice Age that we had in the 1700s, um, those ages, the epochs that the earth has gone through. They say that we have terraformed the earth to such a great degree that we have entered another age, the age of the human. So it seemed to me that that phrase, we are created in the image of God, just meant God created us to be creators. God created us to create. It seemed to me that was the logical answer. But maybe William Blake is closer to correct than I was. Maybe William Blake was on to something. Perhaps it is our spite and our anger. Perhaps it is our cruelty and our jealousy that makes us like the Creator. Maybe you don't believe that. Maybe you think that's a bit harsh. Ask Noah's neighbor how harsh that is. Lots of ages in the Bible wiped away. Ask those firstborns in Egypt if our jealousy is different than God's. I think, maybe, it is William Blake who is closer to right than was I, the young philosopher that I thought I was.
which would make this conundrum, if it is a conundrum, something closer to something closer to cyclical. We are creators like God was, and because of our abilities to create, because of our cognitive functions, we are able to feel the jealousy. We are able to exert the cruelty. Maybe it's just part and parcel. Maybe those things, the good and the bad, go hand in hand. Maybe, just like there is no good without bad, there is no dark without light. The darker something can be, the brighter the light can be as well, which would allow this creative type function to come hand in hand with the cruelty and jealousy of which we are capable. That is all I have for this poetry discussion on William Blake, a divine image. If you want to help me out with what I'm doing on the channel, uh, hitting the like button really does the trick. Uh, it tells YouTube to share this video with other poetry lovers. And lots of poetry discussions to be had. If you have any requests, feel free to leave them in the uh, comment section below. I've got a lot of poetry discussions I still have to do this year. Every Monday, we have poetry discussions on this channel. So a lot of, uh, lot of literature left to be had, and I hope to have you for the next video.